I want you to open your Bible with me this morning, please, to the Old Testament book of the prophet Micah. And we're in Micah this morning, chapter 3, the book of the prophet Micah. And we're in the third chapter this morning. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. And then we come to the book of the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 3, verse 1. And the prophet says, And I said, Hear, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron? Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at the, same, at the time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doing. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace, and he that putteth not into their mouths they even prepare war against him. Therefore night shall be, un shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. And then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded, yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, and to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. And hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob, and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Therefore, Shall Zion for your sake be ploughed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing this morning to that solemn reading of His own precious truth. It's clearly seen, child of God, clearly seen that it is a very dark, on a very dismal day, spiritually speaking, for Micah the prophet to preach in. But there's one thing we must never forget, and there's one thing we must always remember, no matter how dark the time, no matter how dark they are, God still has His man for that day. God has His man. God has His man for the day of evil, for the day of wickedness, for the day of abomination. God has His man to meet the hour. God equips men for the dark and terrible times. 
Boys, I'll tell you, there was no greater man for a dark day than Elijah the prophet. Boys, the nation couldn't have been any darker. It couldn't have been any wickeder. But God had His man for the day, and God had His man for the hour. But did you notice this morning how dark the time for Micah the prophet was? Because the verses of Micah chapter 3 this morning certainly paint a very dark and a very dismal backdrop for God's message this morning. Did you notice how dark? Because from verses 1 to 4, we see the cruelty of the princes. Listen to me. I'll tell you who. Mike is not addressing the sin that's outside the nation. The problem wasn't outside Israel. The problem was inside. Inside. And child of God this morning, it's one thing to deal with the sin and to deal with transgression outside the camp, but it's a different situation when you're trying to deal with the sin and the transgression inside the camp. But sin inside the camp this morning must be dealt with. Must be. We have the cruelty of the princes. Verse 2 says they were spiritually cruel, who hate the good and love the, uh, and love the evil. You know, these were the heads of the nation. These were the people who had the responsibility. They were lovers of evil and haters of good. My friend, when I read that the other morning, I couldn't help but think of the words of the prophet Isaiah 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them, woe unto them that call evil good and that call good evil. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And certainly when we look at these verses this morning, it paints a very dark and a very dismal and a very disturbing backdrop. Not only do we see the cruelty of the princes, but we see here in verses 5 to 7 the corruption of the prophets. Verse 5 and 7, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth they cry, Peace, and he that putteth not into their mouths they even prepare war against him. You see, these were prophets this morning who were corrupting the people. I'm telling you this morning, if you have corrupt prophets, you'll have corrupt people. And these prophets in Micah chapter 3 were prophets this morning who were preaching and declaring to the people what the people wanted to hear, not what the people needed. Woe be tied the day when men in pulpits preach messages that, that what the people want to hear rather than what the people need. I remember when I was on my knees seeking clear direction from God as far as the call to kill Kiel was concerned. I remember standing that night at the kitchen sink. It's not often to stand at the sink. But I remember that night with my Bible open at Jonah 3 and verse uh, 2, I think it was. Jonah 3, and he says, Arise, go to Nineveh, and preach the preaching that I bid thee. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And child of God, we need men today that will preach the messages of God. The corruption of the prophets. A very dark and dismal background, of course, what we have here in Micah chapter 3. But listen, there's something stands out this morning, child of God, that sparkles as clear as crystal. And that is, this morning, the credentials of power. I want you to come with me now to my text because my text this morning is the foundation of God's message. Because here's the secret of how to live in an evil day. Micah 3, verse 8. 
Micah the prophet could say, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I have called this message this morning personal Pentecostal power. W.P. Nicholson used to say some rare things. And I do daily readings every night before I go to bed with W.P. Nicholson. Uh, some, li some, li like to, some, some likes coffee, some likes Weedabix, but I like a wee taste of W.P. Nicholson before I go to bed. But there's one wee thought that W.P. Nicholson said. He says, so many of God's people, man, they'll go to Calvary for their pardon, but they'll not go to Jerusalem for their power. And he talks about the second blessing, and he goes on, well, I would differ a wee bit not, because I believe the moment we're saved, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us the moment we believe. But my friend, if you're a believer this morning, I want you to know this morning that you have the Holy Spirit indwelling your body. Your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. But here's the question this morning. The question is not, have you got the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, but have you got the power? Now, that's the thing. Have you got the power? I find myself, I would need to be running to Jerusalem every day because, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to be in constant contact. But I want you to notice three things about this text, about the prophet. I want you to notice, first of all, the surety of the power. You know, friend, don't forget, child of God, these were dark days. This was a dark hour. This was a dangerous hour. Now listen to me. This was a dangerous hour for any man of God to rise to his feet and to contradict and to challenge the sin within the nation. But Micah the prophet could stand to his feet because Micah was sure of the power, with the power. Listen to what he says. But truly, I am full of power. He didn't stand and say, but truly, I may be or I could be. He says, but truly, I am full of power. Let me make one thing absolutely clear this morning, child of God. When it comes to the doctrine of the Holy Spirit and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, listen, it's not a fanatical message. It's an essential message. It's essential. We all this morning need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because without the power of God, we will never succeed. I want you to know this morning the power that Micah possessed this morning. Listen to me. Listen, child of God. It's the dynamic for the demand, and it's the power for the program. When it comes to living for God, when it comes to witnessing for God, when it comes to standing for God, listen, child of God, we can only do it this morning with the power of God. For Micah this morning, child of God, he knew he had the power because it takes spiritual power. Now, I'll, I'll repeat this. It takes spiritual power to address spiritual problems. But truly I am, truly I am. And you know, sometimes, child of God, too many men today, and they stay clear of the subject of being filled with the Holy Spirit because it's too controversial. But what's controversial is so needful in many of our lives this morning. And you know something, child of God, ask me this question. Have you got the power of God in your life? I want to bring us all into line just now, into line. If you want to live your life for God, and you want your life to leave its mark for God. 
and you want this morning to make your life count for God. Now listen to me. All of us, only one life we have and it will soon be passed. Don't waste it. And remember, it's only what's done for Christ will last. Do you believe me in that? But if you want your life to count for God, you're going to need that life of yours as I need this life of mine this morning to be blessed by the power of God. Charles Finney was a great revivalist in the 1800s. Shortly after Finney was converted, he felt the call of God upon his life for ministry and evangelism. Then he fell upon his knees one morning and cried out to God, O oh God, what is it that I need that my ministry will count for you? And he wasn't too long on his knees until the Lord led him to a verse of Scripture. It was the Gospel of Luke 24 and verse 49. He said, Be endued with power from on high. You see, Finney this morning, he wanted to be sure that the power of God would be upon his life and upon his ministry. And friend, during much prayer and much longing of soul, Finney found the secret. Finney went out into a forest. Again, falling upon his knees, he prayed, O oh God, show me, show me how I can be filled with thy power. He opened his Bible, and Finney said it was by the providence of God. It opened to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, and this is what it said. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And Finney found the secret to spiritual power, and it was that he was to lay his whole life on the altar of sacrifice and say, Lord, don't take part of me, take all of me. And in verse 2 of Romans 12, and be not conformed to this world. He told Finney that day, and, and, and the Holy Spirit uh, was ministering to him through that verse, listen, listen, get rid of everything that is worldly and connected with the world if you want to be endued with power on high. Listen, child of God, are you struggling this morning? Have you not got that power that you should have? Maybe there's things you need to let go of. You're not as powerful this morning. Listen, we can all get like that. And when we all get like that, we need to start searching this morning, child of God. Tell me, what are you holding on to that you need to be letting go of? And listen to me. God doesn't want some of your life. He doesn't want half of your life. He doesn't want he wants three quarters of it. He wants all of it this morning. Has he got it? Stephen Johnson, here on Wednesday night, was preaching in this pulpit, and I was sitting in that front pew. He said something that troubled me. Boys, it troubled me. I didn't tell him that it troubled me, but I will have to. He said, I challenge you this evening with this question. It's not how much have you got of the Holy Spirit, the question is, how much has the Holy Spirit got of you? Tell me this, child of God. How much has God got of you?
You and I are called this morning. Listen to me. If you want to be sure and to be filled with the power of God, you have to learn a lesson in ab abandoning yourself to God. God doesn't want some of you, and He doesn't want half of you. He wants all of us. He wants all of us. The surety of power. But I want you to notice in my text this morning, not only had Micah the surety of power, but he had the strength of power. He says, but truly I am full of power. I'm full. But truly I am full of power. And listen, child of God, what Micah possessed in my text this morning, it's something we all need. Here was a man, listen, God's looking out for men today, men today, filled with power to proclaim His message. A man that's going to faithfully proclaim God's Word is going to be a man that needs to be filled with power of God. And listen, child of God, if you want that life of yours to count for God, and you want to really live for God, God's going to have to get all of you, not some of you. And God demands not encourages, God demands. You give him all of your life. There's no other way, child of God, to live your life for God except it's lived in the power of God. A man who is filled with power will be a man this morning that will be fearless of the people. Fearless of the people and faithful, faithful to God. And it was this power this morning that was enabling Micah the prophet to stand and to address the sin and to address the transgression and to address the abomination. Tell me this, child of God, do you want the power? to live for God. Friend, tonight, this, is this morning, we can have this power, but we must abandon ourselves for God. It was God's power that was enabling God's servant. Listen, listen, child of God, we all need that personal Pentecost experience for our own lives and for our ministry. You know, I loved studying the prophet of Elijah. And I'll tell you what I like about Elijah. I like what James said about him. It says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we were. Listen, he was an ordinary five eight, just like you and me. There's nothing unique about Elijah. There's nothing magical about Elijah. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, subject to doubts, subject to feelings. Subject to temptations. Aye, subject to temptations. But listen to what it said there. But prayed earnestly. And my friend, may I tell you something now? Elijah was the man on the mountain when fire fell from heaven. He was the man filled with power when the son, the widow's son was raised to life. He was the man God had for that dark and devilish uh, days under the reign of Ahab and Jezebel. Ah, but listen, child of God, listen this morning. The secret behind the men of power, they are men of prayer. Very hard to find a man of prayer now. We're tripping over preachers, but we can't find the prayers. That's the problem. A man of power, a man of power will always be a man of prayer. I remember Alec Reed was a Church of Ireland lay reader. And I wasn't too long converted till Alec took me under his wing and Alec Reed told me this. He says, George, if God ever wants you to preach someday, you'll have to learn how to pray before you learn how to preach.
Elijah was a mighty man of God. Do you remember when Elisha, Elijah was taken up into heaven? Elijah took, Elisha took the mantle and he asked this question, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Do you remember that? One of the greatest books I've ever read, and I recommend it into your hands, and I recommend it for you to read. It's called Why Revival Tarries by Leonard Ravenhill. If you've never read it, you ought to read it. There's a title in that book, a chapter in that book, and this is what Ravenhill called it. It's not Where is the Lord God of Elijah? It's Where are the Elijahs of the Lord God? Where are they? Where are the men of power? Where are the men of prayer? Child of God this morning, do you not want to be filled with power to make your life count for God? Because I do. You see, the reason why I want it is because I need it. I need it. And you need it. But truly, I am full of power. You see, that's the surety of power. That's the strength of power. But then I'm going to finish with the source of power. Because it says there, by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, let, let us never, ever, ever, ever shy away from that truth. Because we all need to be filled with the power of the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5 and verse 18, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. My friend, this morning, listen to me. There's no other way we can live our lives for God only by being filled continually with the Spirit of God. Do you want to know how you can be filled fully with the Spirit of God? You first need to be emptied of yourself. You need to be fully empty to be fully filled. I worked with a wee fellow in my first job called Keith Martin. For those of you maybe who follow hot rods, I don't know, but he was a hot rod champion, and Keith and I were, we worked together. And there's an old Nissan Bluebird, and I'm not, I'm not a fan if you're driving a Nissan Bluebird, and she wasn't going right. As we mechanics would say, she was spluttering. She was spluttering. He says, hop in here, and I'll take you for a spin to see where this whole thing's going. To get into a car with Keith Martin definitely helps your prayer life. We went out to Kellerton Road, a big long street, and he kept saying this, he kept saying this wee phrase, this car's not taking the poke. I says, Keith, what do you mean? And I'm sitting 95. I says, what do you mean this thing? She says, it's not taking the poke right. He says, Keith, if this car takes any more poke, it's not a road you need, it's a runway. I says, it's not right. This thing's not running right. So we brought her back into the garage and took the carburetor apart, and there it was, there it was, a wee tiny wing of a fly. Got a pair of tweezers, pulled it out, said to me, hop in, we'll go for another spin. He says, no, I have a few phone calls from me. A wee tiny wing of a fly wasn't letting the car get the full power. What we think, that seems harmless. It's stopping you from living your life in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. What is it? There are things that seem harmless, but they're not harmless in God's sake. 
It was only a wee tiny wing of a fly. My goodness, you could hardly see it. Ah, but it was enough. It was enough to prevent the car demonstrating in full power. Tell me this, child of God, I'm closing this meeting. And here's the question I'm challenging you with, as God has been challenging me. What wee small insignificant thing? Oh, it seems harmless. You listen to Ah, but it's still stopping you. from being filled with the Spirit of God. What is it? What is it? Be careful, child of God, that nothing that nothing gets into the carburetors of our hearts like a car's carburetor. It takes very little to get into our hearts to prevent us from living in the power of God, the Holy Ghost. Listen, as I bring this meeting to a close, will you lay your all on the altar for God? Sacrifice any old worldly pleasure or desire or some old selfish thing in your life this morning. Maybe it's an old grudge. Lay it on the altar. Let the fire burn it and be purified. And let us experience the personal Pentecostal power that needs to be in our lives that we may truly live for God. Tell me something. Will you be able to sing our last hymn? And I mean sing it from the heart because we're going to turn to it now. Here's the secret. 581, all to Jesus. My friend, all to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. Tell me, can you sing that? Are you prepared this morning to surrender your all to Him? and to live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God grant it so this morning.